I decided to build a do-it-yourself organ pedal, for home use. I have got already two manuals, that is two different Yamaha keyboards, I've got two MIDI to USB converter devices, and I've got working commonly known Hauptwerk software. Having such two keyboards you may play organ pieces written even for three manuals, there exist copulations between manuals. But, in my set of instruments there's no pedal. My pedal must be as not expensive as possible. I do not want to trick you, so I won't use the word cheap. Unless you might get proper wooden materials without buying them. The idea is to make the pedal keyboard of range C5, called also C in the great octave, to G4, that is G in one line octave, that are 32 separate keys, white and black. Each wooden key will control an electric contact. If you need smaller range of pedal keys than I mentioned, there will be no problem to resign of a few upper keys. Opening and closing of the contacts we have to convert into proper MIDI signals. And the MIDI interface in my opinion we had better to connect to a computer using USB interface. Then we have only to configure our virtual pedal in Hauptwerk software. We must set the software for playing sounds in chosen range, that is C in great octave to G in one line octave. Converting of the contacts impulses into MIDI signal we will provide by mean of interesting electronic module sold by Mr. Rogala who is an organist, but also an electronic. You may see his Facebook address on the screen. If you wanted to buy such converter and noticed some problems, you might mail me, so I'll try to help you and buy proper version of converter for you. We will call the device Rogala's processor. I personally resigned from buying some part of Rogala's processor, because I wanted to prepare for myself for separating circuits with 30 to diodes 1N4148. I have installed all the diodes onto testing board. I have earlier recognized schematic diagram that I present on the screen now. The diodes have to separate the contacts from each other, because the Rogala's MIDI processor has multiplexed ports. Well forget it, I hope it is clear enough. We must connect a set of micro switches to the mentioned set of separating diodes. Each micro switch will be controlled by each wooden key. I bought 32 micro switches with long arms. You may probably easily buy such ones in the nearest hobby shop or via the internet, they are rather cheap. While developing the pedal I had to find some dimensional compromises. First of all, it will be used at home, where you probably do not have much space for it. Then, I know about my 11 years old son using the pedal. I had to take care of his yet not long legs and not wide feet. Here you are, it is the sketch of the pedal keyboard we will build. Nothing special, it is rather typical mix of white and black keys, as in every pipe organ. Now we will talk about some technical details. If we were professional organ builders, we would prepare the wooden keys with expensive and durable wood, with rather complex steel springs made for each key. But our pedal keyboard shall be a not expensive one, so I simply bought the wooden slats in do-it-yourself store. You probably may also find there such slats as one meter long elements. Sometimes even longer, if so, you will pay less for one key. Although I tried to minimize the quantity of different slats, but we will need a few different sizes of it. The white keys are simply made of a slat of dimensions 45mm and 20mm. We will mount these slats vertically in our pedal keyboard. So each key will be 2cm wide. Also the black keys will be 2cm wide, but their design is more complex. Such black key must have its upper surface much higher than the white keys. But even so, the black key must be mounted on a lever similar to the lever of white key. Still, the black key's lever must be far enough from our shoe, not to let to press unwanted black key while using the neighboring white key. We must hide the black key's lever below the white key. I propose to differ lengths of each black key. Their ends shall create an arc. Obviously, it's only my proposal, as seen in most real pipe organs. 
I gave up trying profiling vertical arrangement of the keys on the arc, as seen on the screen. Not all real pipe organs have such profiling, and I admit that I am not able to do it, maybe when I'm retired. As said before, we shall prepare all the black keys levers using 2 cm square slat. In the part of lever which is pushed by the shoe we will attach the black keys or let's say caps, made of short pieces of slats. Each key we will cut from the slat of dimensions 20 to 55 mm. If we want to keep the arc arrangement of the black keys faces, each of the 13 black buttons will have generally different length. In my model these lengths vary from 10 to 7 cm. The longest ones are located as the first and the last ones, and their sounds are C1 sharp in contra octave and F4 sharp in one line octave. The shortest one is located obviously in the middle and its sound is D3 sharp in small octave. The short pieces of sharp keys, called also caps, may be attached with glue or screws. I chose the screws. But since we are dealing with cheap, fragile pine material, and the width of elements is small, we have to do drill holes before screwing. We cannot rely on self-drilling screws, because without drilling the strips burst when driving screws. Now we will discuss the hinges. I didn't want to use hinges as complex as in a real pipe organ. The easiest way is, in my opinion, to use a strip of material suitably resilient and flexible, yet stiff and resistant to repeated bending. Suitably resilient or elastic, I mean one which gives quite a big resistance to the pressing leg but without fatigating it, and when the pressure releases, the key will approach vigorously up and rests on the upper cover of the housing. Wobbling the key and its lever is not allowed. In other words the pedal cannot dangle loosely while waiting for the pressing. I decided that a flat bar O PVC thick of 3 mm is appropriate. Such flat bars are also available in stores as 1 meter long elements, and perhaps even longer. They are not expensive. The tests on the model have shown that this is the resilience and resistance to the pedal lever, that I thought. Such a flat bar should be fastened to the pedal lever, from the bottom, and to the whole frame from the rear, that is from the side of the player seat. Fixing must be certain, you should not rely on single screw, because lever pedal will start to twist sideways, and the flat bar will start to bend a bow instead working as a spring. It is not what we want. My PVC bars are 12 cm long, of which 5 cm is designed for mounting, and 1 cm as an area to fold. Mounting elements with screws is a separate topic of discussion. We are dealing with the serial repetitive operation, because we need to drill, 32 pairs of holes drilled in the key levers for the hinges. 26 pairs of holes in the black key levers to attach them to the black caps, unless you decide to stick it. 26 pairs of holes drilled in black keys or caps, unless we apply the glue. 64 pairs of holes in our PVC hinges. So the action is worth to prepare appropriate template from a hard material. The template will have a pair of holes, spaced so that they can be used for all of these elements. Remember, we have to make 148 pairs, or 296 holes. Of course, we will be successful only drilling with drill stand, let's not try drilling from a hand, because in such big quantity of necessary holes just the whole structure won't work out. For drilling should be applied and dimensioned so that made the holes really in one line. Remember that nor our levers nor PVC bars cut in a home environment will never be enough equal. Differences in length can exceed 2 millimeters. The holes made in all the PVC bars that will be used as the hinges, or maybe the pair of holes of one side of each PVC bar, we should make slightly larger than the diameter of the screw which passes through those holes. This will provide the ability to adjust the position of the hinges on the key lever, which allows us rather precise adjustment of the parallel position of all keys. But to the screw head did not go over to loose hole, I suggest the use of so-called, in Polish markets, saucer, screws. The head of such a screw looks like an inverted saucer. Like them very much because they have broad but flat head. Their heads of other types of screws, cylindrical or lenticular, often too stand out from the element. 
My saucer screws do not have this problem. The screws of conical heads are not suitable for attaching flat hinges. For something else they are probably more suitable. Pedal key after the cessation of pressing with foot, should vigorously return to the horizontal position. Unfortunately, vigorously means with the clatter, but the noise we will discuss in a moment. To do so, the strap hinge must be mounted on the frame not horizontally, but obliquely. The size of this slant can be adjusted by you, following the result achieved and taking into account the available means of obtaining this bevel. I chose to use a small wooden slats underneath the frame. Everyone can find his substitute something else. It seems to me that my figure reflects precisely this elevation angle which is required for the hinges made of PVC plastic. This angle can be adjusted so as to obtain the key resistance according to your requirements. The larger the angle of inclination, the higher the resistance of the pressed key. Of course everything in moderation because PVC bars strained too far finally will burst. I would add that I considered also hinges on finishing wooden slats, also from do-it-yourself store. It seems to me unnecessarily rigid and I'm a little afraid that eventually will burst. But I think the use of such strips is also an option. From the rear side of the pedal frame, our key levers will be stably fixed by the hinge. Now we have to stabilize the vertical movement of each key from the front side, that one with micro switches. I decided to use sections of PVC pipe, the pipe can also be made of aluminum but will be more expensive. The short pipes or tubes we will mount in slots drilled in the top and bottom of a wooden frame. To save work, we will use the tube with relative big diameter. Thus not to tubes, left and right, will be necessary for each key, but to adjacent keys we will separate it by only one, but respectively thick tube. Now we understand distance between the keys. This distance includes, width of each key lever, a diameter of each vertically mounted stabilizing tube, or you might say, two halves of the tube diameter, two overlays made of felt, one on each side of the lever key. It gives together 20, plus 5, plus 5, plus 2 and a half, and plus 2 and a half, it is 35 millimeters. Add to that half millimeter clearance for free movement. So spacing between the levers are ultimately 36 millimeters. Although we build the pedal cheaply, we cannot yet give up his aesthetic finish. I chose bright varnish finish with shad for the white key and the black keys levers, and dark varnish for caps of the black keys. These are the two small cans visible on the fragment of a film about trying out the elastic bending of the pedal. Of course, the black keys must be painted black before they are screwing or sticking to the lever. Well, we discussed the mechanism of the pedal keyboard. Now it's time for coupling the keys with the micro switches. Without such coupling you'll get no sound pressing the key. Of course, the key moving down at some point must switch the contact in micro switch of the key. But we must be sure that the switching point, when moving down each of the keys, is at the same point. And the switching itself must be done relatively late. Yet the organist must not be afraid that slightly touching the key with his shoe he will get some uncontrollable sounds. Keys should be at the front complemented by an element that will press the arm of its micro switch. We might drill a hole in the front of each key and push the arm into the hole. However, it seems to me more convenient to apply some protruding element, than awkward insertion of 32 levers into the holes in the keys. The role of such a pusher may play a part of some PVC angle bar, glued or screwed pieces of wooden slats or, for example, supporting element to library shelves. The latter of course, should not be circular pins but elements ended with a flat head. There are such supports in a variety of embodiments in various shops. In each case, except gluing pieces of slats, we cannot avoid drilling holes in the front surfaces of the key levers. They will be or holes for micro switches arm, or for screws that secure the pressing PVC angle bar, or holes for pressing shelf support. Let me add that it would good to be able to regulate the vertical position of each pushing element to equalize the switching points of each of the micro switches. It may turn out that switches we have jump not even, and while playing you can feel it as various delays and giving a sound by each key. Lastly, this adjustment can be made by bending arms of the micro switches. 
but then you better buy at least two micro switches more. Depending on the structure of our micro switches we must somehow solve their attachment to the frame of the pedal. Assembling all together we have to mount and attach, 32 key levers with PVC hinges, with two overlays made of felt and with the elements pushing the arms of micro switches, we attach them by hinges to an additional frame mounted obliquely. 33 sections of vertically leading tubes. 32 micro switches. Moreover, somewhere within the framework we have to put the MIDI converter on its circuit board, and separating diodes. I decided to send the MIDI signal already in the form of USB, so in a housing I have also to install the USB MIDI converter that has repeatedly been mentioned. I do not want to deal with the details of the housing of the whole pedal. Everyone must finish it to match personal taste, materials which we have, and also taking into account the number of keys in the pedal. But keep in mind a few things, there must be proper space for a few printed circuit boards. The front part of the key lever, that is the one that pushes micro switches, must be hidden under the cover. That's why black keys caps do not reach the end of each lever. The cover must be equipped with some elements of suppressing the clatter of vigorously returning key, I suggested felt pads, but you can consider elements more elastic, such as thick adhesive gasket profile for windows. Perhaps such elements dampen the clatter more than felt, which is quite hard. Similar, or the same, clatter damping elements shall be provided in the lower part of the housing, so that when you press the key, its clatter could also be suppressed. The top cover in the front of the keys must be at a height such that each key was lying horizontally. We must obviously take into account the thickness of the sound damping felt. Pressing the key should move the key's lever in a range with the switching point of each micro switch. Also here we take into account the thickness of the lower clatter damping pad. The housing of the pedal must be braced. We will provide the stiffness in two ways. We reinforce each corner by means of triangular elements made for example of plywood. And we connect the front and rear of the frame by means of strips or rods to prevent bending. Such reinforcement should be performed at least once in the middle of the width of the housing, but I suggest two pieces, each in more or less one third of the width. Mounting of triangles of plywood will raise the pedal above the floor just about the thickness of the plywood. If someone wants to avoid it, or do not have plywood, can use for example, rigid metal stripes diagonally mounted at an angle of 45 degrees, like the longest sides of the triangle of plywood. In this case, to ensure peace at home, I'd suggest to glue furniture felt pads to these metal brackets. What avoids scratches on the floor? Another option for the stiff frame. Inside frame corner we might use ready corner stiffening elements for furniture, they are available in stores. But they must be really rigid elements made of metal, a popular plastic corners are too flexible and will not stiffen the frame. The best stiff solution would be using a plywood as a cover of our frame underneath the keys. But our work did not require closing the underside, the pedal would unnecessarily accumulate dirt, moreover, that would made pedal heavy, and sometimes you would have to pick it up. Connecting the front and rear edge of the frame must be narrow enough not to interfere with the movement of the key's lever. They should be mounted as low as possible, just off the floor. Again, I remind that we use a narrow strips or round wooden rods, we should make some holes to avoid them bursting when screwing. Of course, the stiffener may be made of threaded metal rods, if such a solution does not seem to be unesthetic. At the end we will finish pedal housing with varnish, because certainly something left in tins after painting the keys, right? Mechanical matters are behind us, now electronics. We need to connect several modules, a plate of Rogala's MIDI processor with separating diodes on the other plate. Micro switches of each key with the separating diodes plate. Rogala's MIDI processor with MIDI USB converter. And the MIDI processor should have provided the power supply. Rogala's MIDI processor we connect to the separating diodes by meant of multi-wire band, with proper connectors suited to the connection pins on the printed board. I need such connector only on one side of the band because, as described earlier, I mounted the diodes by myself and I must solder the wires on my universal printed board. 
If you buy the diodes together with the raw Gala's processor, you obviously will find connecting pins on the printed board you bought. From each micro switch we have to use one pair of wires to proper point on the separating diodes printed board. From one side we will connect a wire to anode of diode serving for one sound. The other wire from the micro switch goes to a bus which further is connected to input output ports of Rogala's processor. The processor is equipped with 5 pinned in female connector for MIDI signals. The connector may be located in the housing of our pedal, or it may be connected with an MIDI USB converter inside the housing. That's my way. The MIDI processor has a red LED diode which also may be located in the frame, to show the processors dealing some signals, the LED flashes then. And, last not least, we have to mount a connector suited to the plug of our DC power supply. The power supply module is to give current at least 200 milliampers. The voltage does not need to be stabilized. Having connected all the modules and at least a few key switches, we may test the pedal. After pressing a switch, the diode of the processor should flash. It is our first step on the way to success. If we use MIDI USB converter, we should see its LED flashing as well. That's the second step. The third step is, connecting the MIDI signal to the computer, launching Hauptwerk software, loading our favorite organ on it, switch on at least one pedal register, configure the range of our keyboard, as shown earlier. And the organ? Plays? Or not? Can I congratulate? Yes? So I'm very glad. We finally must put all the keys permanently in the housing, set all the micro switches to proper cooperation with the keys levers, maybe equalize the moments of switching in our set of keys, and practice, practice and practice again. In order to come quickly to such a practice in the use of the pedal, like my favorite organist has. The organist is young, nice and promising Dutch organist Hurt Van Hoof. Let's see and hear. Ik ga niet, 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 niet